Hey, what's up everyone? This is Faja and we are back once again today with another production tutorial. Today we're going to go over how I do the mixing on my sub bass, kick, and bass, just the general low end. I don't do anything super complicated. It's pretty simple, so it's going to be a very quick and easy video. We're going to dive into the mixing on my track Down Low with Oing on Barong Family. Let's get right into it. So to start, we're gonna go on the kick, which is the most important element of any dance track. So this one wasn't complicated. So this this is a kick I'm pretty sure from the Speedhouse Movement Family Pack, Oing had used it. And pretty, pretty much I just slap kick tweak. I use preset number five quite a bit, but there's other ones that work sometimes. Now sometimes I add a bit of like transient shaper on it just to give it extra punch, or I'll add like an LFO tool and carve the kick so that, you know, it's like this, so it does not cut into the bass line. But for this one, I didn't need to because as you can see, if we zoom in, the kick does not progress past, you know, the halfway point. It, it's just this area. So there's no need to add that LFO tool. And also it was pretty punchy already, so I didn't need a transient shaper or anything like that. So pretty simple. A good tip is you shouldn't have to do a whole bunch of processing on your kick. Just pick good samples. I remember a mentor of mine said, instead of trying to make a shitty sample sound good, just pick a good sample to begin with and then do some minimal processing and maybe shaping the envelope or whatever of it. So next, we're gonna move on to the sub. So my sub is pretty simple. It varies every time depending on the key of the track. You just have to kind of see which notes resonate better. But basically I did a sine with a square and then another square and a higher octave. I vary it up, you just have to mess around and see what works best, but a sine and a square wave together usually work pretty well. I find these are kind of the best waveforms for subs, and I think that's usually what people would recommend. Then I do this in a very random order, I always move it around, again you just have to see how it sounds like, but basically first I have a uh, sub filter. Um, what it does is it's just boosting and making the, the sub resonate at the frequency of the root note of the key that it's playing in. So I always check my key to frequency chart um, and that's just how I, you know, help boost all my sub and even sometimes my kick. And then I just saturated it. Oh, it looks like Camel Crusher is not working right now, but I put Camel Crusher. Uh, sausage fattener, OTT to compress everything. It's really just about saturating and then compressing. Um, I just kind of do it randomly, just do it by ear, but honestly, it's very simple. Um, and OTT works so easy, so just try that out, saturating and then compressing after. And then I have PsyQ. Now, I boosted the low end on it with this EQ. It sounds dope. You can probably use any kind of like analog EQ, um, additive EQ. It'll just, it'll just make it sound a little extra good, I guess. <laughs> and for my sub, yeah, I basically just carved out everything up to here. I went by ear as well. I put a brick wall uh, EQ right here. I kind of stopped doing that recently. But um, you can do it in some places. Just sometimes apparently it adds resonant frequencies that will that will mess with the loudness of your final master, but you can use it in certain places. Um, so just have to feel that out and see what works best. Then I have MUJC, which is just a kind of compressor to control the overall volume. Sometimes I just add that on um, just to keep everything properly leveled because sometimes sub frequencies will resonate extra loud depending what note they're playing and I don't want that I want them to stay leveled so I slap on MJUC and it just controls everything and then of course I have my side chain so it's cutting pretty hard and it's really just shaping it perfectly with the kick volume um, so they don't interfere at all play this up actually so it's pretty simple uh, I don't know if you can hear it Maybe only hear it if you're listening on speakers though. Now moving on to my bass. This is the chain I use on a lot of my bass lines if it's gonna be like a, a core element, like a speed house bass. So it's always a main channel that goes to a, a mono channel. It's parallel compression. And then I always have like a reverb send or whatever. So I kind of compress the signal that goes into the reverb set a bit more. And then I have the reverb and then the limiter to control it. And then I EQ just the parts that I want. But on the main channel, it's very similar to everything else I do. It's a lot of like saturation, uh, maybe adding some punch with, with SPL Attacker, a lot of overdrive for distortion and saturation, and then just more EQ boosting. And the smile you can ignore, that's just for an effects. And then the final channel is even more. So like once all three channels come together, then I compress them together, saturate them together. I boost certain areas with vitamin stereo. 
I EQ it again because sometimes there might be some extra frequencies coming out from the compression, so I just re-EQ it all out. A side widener, very good way to add width without messing with your mono signal. And then these are just kind of filters for effects, so you don't need to worry about that. And then lastly, of course, sidechain. So I, I sidechain this a little less steep because I have a pretty, pretty low sounding kick. So I felt like the bass didn't need to be carved quite as much. It can sit a little higher up in the mix. The less you sidechain it, the higher up it kind of sits in the mix. So you can think of it that way. So yeah, I keep my bass and sub and kick pretty simple. You shouldn't have to do anything overly complicated. It's possible with other genres, like maybe side trans, it'll be a little bit more tricky or intricate, but ultimately you want it to be simple. You shouldn't have to do a whole bunch of work. So if you have any questions about what I did or maybe anything else you want me to cover, be sure to let me know and I'll go over it in the next video. Break, comment, subscribe, all of that, and I will see you next time.